adding and organizing properties on your document types is what allows you and your content editors to add actual content to the content section. In this video, we'll be using the document type editor to add a property to our homepage document type. Here's a quick agenda of what we'll be covering in this video. We'll start by talking about the built-in properties that are default for every piece of content in Umbraco. Then we'll move on to groups, which are used to organize your properties. I'll show you how to add your own properties to store specific content data. And finally, I'll give you a few tips for working with properties. Let's get to it. The final thing we did in the last video was creating a content node using our new homepage document type. As you can see, it currently says that no content can be added for our front page at the moment. That's simply because we haven't added any properties to the document type yet. You will also notice here at the top that we have two different tabs next to the content name. We are currently on the content tab, which is where we will be able to add data to the content once we've added some properties. Before we go ahead and do that, let's start by giving the info tab a look. Here you'll find the built-in metadata properties, which are default on all the content you create. There's a link to the front end of the published page. You'll also be able to see the revision history down here. When was the item created or edited and who did it? There's also an option to quickly roll back the content to an earlier version. In the box here to the right, you'll find some more general information about the content. You can see the status of the content, if it's published or not. When was the content item created? You can see which document type the content page is based on and the template it's currently using. And finally, you can see the automatically generated ID and GUIDs down here. So as I mentioned, these details are always there to use, even though you will not be able to see them in the document type editor. When you add more properties to your document type, you will see them on the content tab here. So let's start by determining which kind of information we want to save on this homepage. What I've made here is a very rough visualization of how we want our homepage to look once we're done setting it up. In this video, we'll be adding the main text here. It'll be called body text. To start adding custom properties to a document type, we can either head back to the settings section and find the document type there, or we can simply open the document type from the content item by going to the info page and clicking open here next to the document type. So we'll do that. Great. The first option we're presented with here is to add a group. You can add multiple groups to your document types, and it's a great way of organizing the properties to make it easier for your content editors to know which data goes where. Let's go ahead and create our first group, and we'll call it content. In this group, we're going to click Add Property. And first things first, we have to give the property a name. This will be visible as a label for our content editors in the content section. So we'll call this one body text. There we go. As you add the name, you'll notice that an alias is automatically generated based on the name you enter. This can be changed later by unlocking the field. Let's leave the description blank for now, as we'll cover that in a later episode. Next up, we'll add an editor to define what type of content will be stored in this property. So for this property, we want a rich text editor, which is a perfect way to store freeform text, including links and images. So we'll pick that one, submit, there we go. Umbraco comes out of the box with a bunch of different editors you can choose from. These will be covered in the next video. We will also cover the remaining options here, the mandatory field and the custom validation dropdown in a later episode. So if we go ahead and submit, we now have a visual representation of our group and the property editor, which is defining our content as rich text. Awesome, we now have a place to store the body text. Let's go ahead and save the changes we've made. As we've edited the document type directly from the content section, we only need to go back to the content tab to see our property editor. So we'll go and do that, click here. And we're now able to add some content to our front page. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and save and publish. So now our content editors will be able to add some actual content to the website. 
Adding more groups and properties to the document type will expand the view here as our site grows. Here's a few tips to keep in mind when adding properties to your document types. One of the first and most important things to consider here is which pieces of information do you need for this page? Is it a home page like the one we've created in this chapter? You might want to add some text, some images, and perhaps some links. In an article, for example, you most likely want to save different info and will therefore need a different set of properties. That leads me to the next tip. Each piece of info you need on a page will be a property on the document type. How many properties you create is entirely up to you. Make as many as you need. Umbrac allows an unlimited number of properties. You might end up having document types with only a couple of properties, as well as document types with a bunch of properties. It depends on what information you want to save on the pages. Before wrapping up this video, let's do one more example with an employee page. As you can see, we would want to save different kinds of information on that page than we did on the home page. Here would, you would most likely want to add a name and a photo, a biography, perhaps even a job description, and some contact info as well. So for each of these bits of information, we'd need to add properties fitting the kind of information we'd want to add. Let's have another quick look at the analogy here to further the understanding of the purpose of properties. With the movie collection, one option would be to add the data about each movie into a spreadsheet. Each new row would be a new video. This concept also applies to document types and properties. Imagine the spreadsheet as a document type. Each field or column here is a property with different kinds of data. And finally, each row is a content page representing an employee. You might not always have more content pages based on the same document type. For example, with the home page document type, we will most likely only need one content page based on that one. Right, that was a whole lot of information about properties and groups. Let's do a quick review. Each content page comes with a set of built-in properties. You can add as many properties to a document type as you'd like. Use groups to organize the properties for your content editors. You cannot enter content until there is a place to store it. And you've defined what type of content it should be. In the next video, we'll move on to talk about data types and property editors, as well as how to create and reuse editors. See you there.